Hi guys, Samantha from Juicy Mo Tutorials here, and this is the second part in our review in our texture stamp review series. And today's texture stamp review will be Helen Brails. So, the one that I got over here is Helen Brails Congo line, which is one of my favourites. But that's just a personal opinion. She has lots of different types of textures that you can get. And so I'm going to start with the upsides to these texture stamps. And so the first and most obvious one is the fact that you get multiple textures in each stamp. So this one you actually get six different textures, as you can see. And they're all in their different compartments in the texture stamp. And now the, good, the reason this is good is because you can get six different textures. Or when you're taking out a bead, so let's say this is your bead, you can get three or more textures into your bead at the same time. So it just makes your bead look a little bit more interesting. Whereas if you were to look at one of the other texture stamps, like Lisa Pavelka's, and I've got her foliage one over here, you can see that it's just one texture throughout the texture stamp. So this can be seen as a good or a bad. If you wanted one solid texture, this might be a little bit problematic. But I think it's quite interesting to have more than one texture in each individual bead. So that's the biggest upside for me. Another upside is the fact that the texture itself is really, really detailed. And so I'll demonstrate that for you in a second by just taking some of this Primo Bronze and popping it into the stamp. And I'll show you how detailed these textures are. So it works just like any other rubber texture. You spray the texture with water or give it a light brush of cornstarch if your clay reacts with water. And then just press the clay into the stamp, just like always. Super easy, super fast, works great. And there you are. And there's the texture. And so you can see that it's really detailed. Just quickly dry that off a little bit. There we go. And so you can see it, that is quite detailed. And that's another really big upside to these textures is the fact that they have quite a bit more detail than other texture stamps, such as the Lisa Pavelka ones. And this is because they're mainly supposed to be used as textures and not really in other techniques such as Muku Megane or Satin Slices. And I'll talk more about that in a little while. But basically, if you're looking for a really detailed stamp, this is one of the best rubber one rubber brands that I have found. So you can see that the texture is really detailed and you can get a lot of texture into a small space. Now another upside which basically applies to all rubber stamps is the fact that it's quite flexible so you can basically fold it in half and it'll be just fine. It's also very strong so it's slightly flexible but I'm pulling on it and it's pretty strong and so it will last for quite a while. Another one, which is a pretty big upside, is the fact that the stamp is bakeable. So this can be used in many different ways. If you maybe wanted to put some clay in here, shave off the raised areas and just leave some clay in the grooves over here. And then they would be too um, fragile for you to take out while they were raw. You could just pop this in the oven, have that little bit to bake and then you could take them out when they're baked and then apply them to your project. It's also good if your clay accidentally gets stuck into your texture and you can't get it out. Just pop it in the oven, bake it, and it will come out just fine. So that's a great upside. So if I were to show you what I meant, just go take a little bit of bronze clay, pop it into this texture here, bring over my blade, and gently say, shave. So I did that very quickly, but you can see that we have these two parts here. So if I try to take this out, it's probably going to get distorted. So you can see that that's very fragile to work with. And so you might want to just leave this in the stamp, pop it in the oven to bake for around half an hour to an hour, then pop it out when it was baked, and it will be much easier to work with. And that also applies to if you accidentally um, got your clay stuck in your stamp. So that's a big upside to this type of stamp. Um, it basically occur, It basically applies to all the rubber stamps. So you can basically do it with Christy Friesen stamps and Lisa Pavelka stamps and some of the other ones that I might be forgetting. 
So those are basically all the upsides. Um, some of the downsides are quite big downsides, but it really depends on what you want the stamp to do. The biggest problem is the fact that these stamps are fairly shallow. So if I were to bring this over, and I'll bring over one from Lisa Pavelka's, you can see that the style of the texture is quite different. So this one, you can see that there's a lot more detail, as I said before, but it is a lot more shallow compared to this one. So here's, this is Lisa Pavelka's foliage stamp. So you can see that there's just a completely different style involved. So if you're one of those people that like making a lot of Mukume Gane, Mike Shifts and Satin Slices, I'd recommend Lisa Pavelka's. But if you're a, a person who likes to have nice detailed stamps with lots of texture and it's just basically for a texture and not for Mukume Gane and things like that, and you're going to use it with pastels and alcohol inks and paints, then this is much better than this one because this on its own in a bead um, wouldn't really stand up to its, it wouldn't really work. But this on its own, I mean you could just cut out a circle over here, dab a little bit of pastels on it and it would look great. Well with this one it would look a little bit bolshy. So it basically just depends on what you want the stamp to do. So if you want to do Mukumagane, the Super Velkas or Christy Friesen's is better. If you want, if you're working a lot in mixed media and you want just basically a really detailed crisp texture then Hill and Brails is much better for that. So that's basically the biggest downside. You can't really do um, you can't really do Mic Shift Satin Slice or Mukume Gane with this. You can do Mic Shift with it to a certain degree, but I'll just demonstrate that quickly. You have to be so careful with how you shave. You have to take such um, shallow slices. And the thing is, if you practiced a lot with your blade and you can control it, that will be just fine for you. So if you've had a lot of practice, you'll be able to get a mic shift from this. But the problem is that it takes a lot of patience, you have to be very careful, and the mic shift still doesn't come out as well as one of the deeper textures. But you can get a nice mic shift from it if you're careful. So that's basically the biggest problem. Another problem which applies to basically all stamps in general is the fact that they are quite distinctive. So if I were to show you this and not tell you where the stamp comes from, chances are if you've been in the polymer clay community for any length of time, you'd be able to tell me that this was Helen Braille's texture stamp. And if I were to show you this one over here and not tell you who it was made by and ask you to guess who it was from, chances are you would tell me that's from Lisa Pavelka. So that's the problem when it comes to um, these stamps. They, they give quite a distinctive style and you can basically tell who they're from. And since they're in mass production, a lot of people will have them and it means that um, your beads can end up looking the same as everybody else's. Now that can be a, a bad side, but it's not really that big a downside unless you are trying to make your jewellery look very, very unique. To be honest, I don't find it a downside. But that's another thing that I just thought I'd mention, but that basically is across all the texture stamps there are. You are just, unless you make your own texture stamp out of polymer clay or photopolymer, you're not really going to be able to get a unique texture. But I don't really find it a problem that much. So that's basically all there is to these to Helen Braille's texture stamps. My overall, my overall recommendation for them is that if you're a mixed media artist with polymer clay and you like using pastels and alcohol inks and paints and all of those sorts of things, then these stamps are really going to work with you. And if you go and have a look at some of the examples of Helen Braille's work, you'll see that that's basically what most of her um, jewellery designs look like. They basically our textures with mixed media over the top of it and it looks really really nice it's quite it works very well so that's my recommendation for these if you like doing mukume gane and things like that then you might want to look into some of the other texture stamps so that's basically it if you want to know where to get these texture stamps um, you can get them off of Linda's Art Spot. That's where I got mine from. She's got a bunch of different designs. She's also got Helen Braille's silk screens, which are super cool. So you can have a look at those. 
as there's some of the some really nice designs over there and there's some of my favourite silk screens over there so be sure to check that out and I'll provide a link to that in the link below the video. And so I do hope that this tutorial was helpful to you and if it was please do let me know and let me know your ideas or opinions on this texture step. How do you feel about it and what do you use it for? As that's always helpful to me. And please do check the links below as there will be a link to my website there, jessimatutorials.com where I have articles, places where you can send in pictures and early access to all of my YouTube tutorials. So about a week ahead of time. So be sure to check that out as you'll be able to get early access to all of these tutorials. And as always, I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.